the wrong. All right, we're gonna pick up where we left off on the last game. We're about halfway through. I believe it is time to do the Cliffs of Insanity. Let's give that a try. Right, hang on a second. We readjust some things. Give me one second. It's a little smaller. So it fits in the screen better. Make me a little smaller so I get out of the way a little better. Okay, here we go. The, the granite puzzle. cliffs cannot be scaled by hand. There appears to be something etched into the face of the cliff. Alexander decides to get closer. Ouch. So we're going to spell the word rise. Huge blocks of stone erupt from the granite cliffs. Alexander stares with wonder. That's quite a way to welcome a guest, if indeed it is a welcome. The catch here is to be very careful as you climb. The steps cannot be moved any further backwards or forward. All right. You have to be very careful because there's one misstep, you will fall to your death. Whoa, wait a minute. Dude, not that hard. Whoa, wait. Whoa, wait. Get him lined up while the thing is on the crown, it works a lot better. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, wait. Oh, I don't want to go through this every single time. Whoa, wait a Whoa, wait. Dude, climb. It's not a hard concept. Whoa, wait. Whoa, whoa, wait. Sorry, I haven't done this game in a while. Whoa! Dude, seriously. Okay. So you really want to save your game every time you get to the next level. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. Alright, this is the one that I hate. So the first one is Tranquility, which is this one. And it's Azure, which is this one. And Caterpillar, which is this one. Followed by Air, which is... That one. Is it this one? Please do this one. Nope. Nothing happens. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. Hey, one second. Okay. 
So this one is tranquility. This one is Azure. This is Caterpillar. And where is Air? There's Air. Hang on a Okay, so according to this, let me start over. Nothing happens. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. I just I think I have them in the wrong order. So according to this one, it's Azura first, so it's this one first, then Caterpillar, then Tranquility. And air. Which I've already lost where that one is. Air. Okay, still isn't right. Nothing happens. I'm gonna restore the game. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. Oh, you know what? This one's different. This one's different. This one's... Okay, I'm trying to do the fourth puzzle for the second puzzle. So give me one second again. Okay, so we need to do Thor for this one. So S is this one. O is this one. A Leave is this one, and then R. How did you get that one? Crud. Okay, hang on, let me start over. Reading about the ancient one, nothing happens. 
Hang on. It's Alexander burned. examines the strange hard. etchings in the face of the cliff. Okay, let's try again. This one is S. This one is O. Um. A. R. The stone beneath yes. Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs. So I was trying to do. Duh. All right, save the game again. Genius. Whoa. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. 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 Seriously, dude. This is getting old fast. Whoa, wait a minute. Were you freaking balance already? Good lord, from Alex. Whoa, wait a minute. the next one. Save the game. Save, save, save. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. So this one is four, one, two. The stone beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs. Because you can fall walking, just so you know. Just walking on your steps, you can fall. Whoa! Whoa! Good lord, dude. Okay, there we go! This actually Next. comes into play later in the game. This that wasn't thing. a very logical step. Oh, shush. But yeah, this comes into play later in the game, actually. That is why you say frequently, though. Whoa! Whoa! Are you freaking balance already? It's not hard. Whoa, wait. Whoa, wait. Oh, goodness, Alex. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. At this point, I would hate to look down. Just saying. That you're only balanced on Whoa. like a tiny step. Tiny stone. Alright, this is Alexander the one I was trying to do earlier. The strange it wasn't working. In the face of the cliff. So let's try this one again. The tranquility. Azure. I know I'm not saying that right. Which is this one. Caterpillar and air. What do you do with you? The stone beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs. 
Let's again save. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. Whoa. I look seriously, dude. Whoa. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, wait. Dude. Whoa. Can you hurry up? Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. Thank goodness this is the last puzzle because his balance issues are getting on my nerves. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. Do -do -do -do. This one is Ascend. A S C E N D. The stone beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs. Save. Whoa! 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 My super sensitive mouse is not helping. Whoa! Wait! Whoa! 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 Wait! Up already. I'm getting on my nerves. Don't talk to this dude. Alexander finds himself finally at the top of the cliffs. Exhausted, he steps over the lip of the plateau and stands. Why do you make such an effort to climb the cliffs, young man? The winged ones who live on this island have the power of flight. You could have it too. If you'd only eat a berry from this magical flying nightshade bush. See? The sweet berries will make you float like a petal on the wind. Try some. You saved my game for making her talk. Yeah, don't talk to the old lady. Don't talk to her, don't mess with her, do nothing of the kind. Come straight! All right then! Stay tied to the ground like a load of lead! See if I care! You... 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 human... You human! How odd. The old woman just disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Of course she did. Perhaps those berries are even more powerful than she led Alexander to believe. Look, an intruder! Hold! How did you get up here, human? I climbed the cliffs. That is not possible. No one has solved the cliffs of logic in several centuries. And if the cliffs were to be solved, it would certainly not be by a... With what up. trickery did you master the cliffs of logic and reach the city of the winged ones? Only the magic of clear thought, my lord. I meant no harm. The cliffs of logic? It is the sacred oracle's prophecy, Azure. Yes, Ariel. Hmm. 
It is lucky for you, human, that climbing the cliffs of logic is part of a prophecy that I cannot ignore. We have just been ordered by Wazir Al-Hazred himself to dispose of any strangers that might land on our fair isle. But the prophecy would have a different fate befall you. The prophecy predicts that whosoever climbs the cliffs of logic will defeat the Minotaur. The Minotaur has violated our sacred catacombs and eats our young in sacrifice. Our own daughter, Lady Celeste, was taken there only this morning as his most recently demanded offering. Oh, you know what? A dilemma, then. I am ready. Very well. I think I'm going to restore because I think I messed up. To Why did you my... tell Lord Some Azure you were ready and willing to face the catacombs? No one is ever ready, and only a fool could be willing. And you are far wiser, I suppose, to leave a maiden to die? To not fight this plague on your own people? Bravery and suicide are two different things, human. You will have a chance to renounce your choice soon enough, when you lay trembling under the Minotaur's hooves. We shall see. Thanks for the escort. We only escort you to your death. May the fates make it quick so that you do not have to scream long. I'm gonna restore for a second. Back up a little bit. Cause I need to go in here. Come, stranger! It would be rather rude to crawl into that cave with the old woman standing right... It would be rather rude... Young man, you offend me! I... It would be rather... It would be rather... It would be rather... All right, then! Stay tied to the ground like a load of lead! See if I care! How odd. The old woman... Alexander crawls through the small... Alexander finds himself in a... Alexander takes the candle from his tinderbox. Dead end. Nuff. Dead end. Dead end. Dead end. Alexander's Alexander I'm supposed to go through there. Please Alexander go. sees nothing. Alexander doesn't Alexander crawls through There we go. <laughs> it's hard to see. The lighting in this the window in Alexander takes a few leaves from the Alexander crawls back into the first <sighs> Alexander can't Alexander crawls back through the... There we go. Okay. I might have been able to do that later, because you have to come back to the island to get the horse, but... I'd rather just get it out of the way. So I... Skip but I know we already went through it.
With what? Only the cl Yes, sir. We have j the, the minute a dilemma. I will not res. Hmm. I am ready. Very well. My God. Why did you and grab we sh we Okay. This is another one of those times you want to frequently save your game. Because it's very easy to get lost. The catacombs entrance door is locked from the outside by the winged one's guards. It seems that leaving the catacombs by that door is not an option. Alright, this is where you need to know your compass rose. So, we're going to walk north twice. That's not a good sign. East twice. And north again. Need the skull. Alexander picks up the skull. Save the game again. So now we're gonna go south. West, west, north again. Then south. All right, this one's tricky. You only want to step on the roses, I believe. So save the game. Wish I had my guidebook. <sighs> Sorry, I'm doing, trying to use like two different walkthroughs. This is not helpful. Okay, save. So it wants me to go north. Southwest. Southwest. North. North. Northwest. Southwest. South. Okay, made it. I'm used to it like saying step on the rose, the sickle, the crown, whatever. Okay. Now we're gonna go west, north, grab the shield. Alexander takes the shield from the wall. Let's save the game. Anytime I pick something up, I'm saving the game, so I have a reference point to go back to if I need to. So now we're gonna go... North. Mm -hmm. 
North. North. I think we go west two times. Coins. Alexander finds two coins on the skeleton's eyes. He takes the old coins. Sorry, I'm getting that ready. We're going to need it in a minute. Same game. Gonna need the brick in a minute. You got to be quick. So now we're going to go east twice. It's a tr and the ceiling in a desperate the brick is caught between two the mechanism grinds to a halt the ceiling is stuck the trap okay. is sprung Save the game <coughs> excuse me okay now we're gonna walk east East, North, and East, then we should fall. Yep. Sounds! A trap floor! Boom! Alexander seems to have fallen to a lower level of the catacombs. Wherever he is, the place sure is dark. Alexander can't even see his hand in front of his face. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's use the tinderbox. Alexander takes the candle from his tinderbox and uses the flint in the box to light it. Aha! So that's why it's dark in here. A torch is out. Alexander lights the extinguished torch and puts his tinderbox away. Okay, save the game. This is where it gets a little tricky. We're gonna walk west five times. So one, two, three, four. Five. Now we're gonna go south twice. One, two, and then we're gonna go east. Alexander can't use the hole in the All right, better start. See, this is why you save. One, two, three, four, five. You know why? Because I went west. Ha! Huh. I didn't go east. I went west. That's the problem. Alexander hears the sound of a wild beast again. This time, so loud that the creature itself seems to be in the same room with him. The noises are coming from the other side of the east wall. Now we can use the hole on the wall properly. 
Alexander puts the hole in the wall on the east wall. The hole in the wall trembles slightly with dread at the clammy feeling of the stones. Alexander peers through the hole in the wall and sees just another room in the catacombs. Not for long. Aha! Not just another room at all. So that's why Alexander couldn't find the Minotaur's lair. At least Alexander now knows the lair exists somewhere in the maze on the other side of this wall. While Alexander contemplates what he's just seen, the hole in the wall, frightened by the Minotaur, makes a run for it. Alexander hopes the little creature finds its way home to the Isle of Wonder. Time to save the game again. Now we gotta go face the Minotaur. Oof. Okay. So, we're going to walk west three times. That's one, two, and three. South twice. East once. Obviously south, can't go anywhere else. East twice. North. Obviously east. And north twice, and we should be there. Get it right, there's the tapestry. Alright, save the game. Hmm. This tapestry looks familiar. Now let's see. I don't feel anything. Aha! A hidden latch. Alexander triggers the little latch. A secret door rolls open. I'm gonna get the scarf ready, because we need it next. <coughs> Here we go. No! I... Your struggles are useless! It's the Minotaur, and he's struggling with a winged one's girl. She must be Lady Celeste. Alexander steps further into the room. <coughs> the infant catches Lady Celeste's eye. She screams for help. You there! Human! Help me! Help! <sighs> Who dares enter my lair? I ask you to release your captive or suffer the consequences. <sighs> Never you die, human. As the Minotaur advances in attack, Alexander slowly backs away. Until he can back away no more. Now where to, little man? Alexander, he Look here, you bully! Nice, bright red. Sorry, I'm gonna have the mouse, I'm just gonna click through the talking. Now you die! Okay. The Minotaur drops from sight amidst the consuming flames. Slowly, his scream fades as well. Have you been harmed, Lady Celeste? Are you all right? No, I am not all right. I assume you do not intend to leave me tied up on this vile monstrosity. Uh, of course not. Sorry. Let's see. If you'll give me a moment, I'll have these untied in no time. I can't wait that long. Look, I wear a small dagger just inside my belt. It should be enough to cut the rope. Oh, 
All right, I... I've got it, Lady Celeste. Here we go. Thank you. You may keep the dagger as a gift for saving my life. He thanks. That's very generous. Forget it. Do you mind if we just get out of here now? The Winged One's guards, bored with the pointless waiting, are startled by the sound of rock moving against rock. Lady Celeste, bide thee well. I'm quite well, thanks to the bravery of a mere human. So much for your superior intellects. <laughs> yes, me lady. Now bring him along. I'm going home. I see you have proven yourself the hero of the prophecy. Well, I am expected to thank you for saving my daughter's life. So I thank you. I am obliged to thank, thank you, you for the restoration of our sacred catacombs. It means much to our people. We have already begun the process of clearing the deadly traps from its rooms. It is also my duty to grant you a visit with the Oracle. So this I do. I will grant you the freedom to leave here unharmed, despite my orders to the contrary from the Crown. But there, my obligations to you end. I have no love for Alhazred, but he is my liege, and if Princess Kasima trusts him and wishes to wed him, she my guards will take him. you to the Oracle now. When your time with her is through, she I want you him. to leave the City of the Winged Ones and never return. I don't know who you are or what you want here, but I will not disobey my crown further. I thank you, Lord Azure. I will respect your wishes. Sort of. We actually did come back to the Isle once, but we don't go near the city. Hail to thee, great oracle. Lord Azure sends you this wingless mail. It appears that he solved the cliffs of logic and... Defeated the Minotaur in his lair. So I have seen. So this is the one that haunts my pool of late. Welcome, young seeker. What knowledge do you desire? Princess Kasima, whatever you can tell me, great oracle. Ah, of course, the princess. That explains my images. Let us see what we can see. I see a maiden, lovely and pure, but surrounded by evil. She is a rose set amidst bitter thorns. It is her fate to be the pawn of dark powers, and yours to try to redeem her. How? How do I redeem her? Fate is not like the cut of a blade, young one, but rather like the myriad of paths formed when a hammer cracks ice. I will tell you what I can, but what will actually come to pass is up to you. I see that any attempt to reach the goal will force you into battle, a struggle against a dark force. If you lose, your life will be forfeit. Who Clearly. must I fight? Clearly. A great darkness surrounds your adversary, preventing me from seeing clearly. I can only make out the shape of a black cloak. But before this final struggle, I see an infiltration, a dangerous game of hide-and-seek in corridors filled with enemies. The risks are high, but it is the only way to reach the one you seek. There is more than one way into this place. Your choice will dictate much. What else do you see, mighty oracle? Oh! Oh, such pain. I see two 
two restless spirits crying out for revenge. These shades could help you destroy the dark force if they were to be brought back from their spiritual form. Yet this is only one possible path to your destiny. I'm afraid this is getting beyond me. I know very little about the afterlife. I can only advise getting counsel from the druids. Be warned. The druids are reclusive and dangerous. They might aid you, or they might destroy you. Like their island, the druids' nature is hidden in the mists. There is nothing more I can do for you, except to give you this. It is water from the sacred pool. That and my blessing go with you. Thank you, great oracle. <laughs> Okay. Now, save the game again, because we've survived all that mess. Now we need the map. And a new island should show up. Alexander pulls out his magic map. There it is, all of the mess. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. From the north. The west. Alexander takes the scythe. From the east come the sounds of mysterious drums and chanting. Alexander reaches into the fire pit and takes a lump of coal. Okay, here we go. Oh, shoot. Alexander is frozen. Brothers, look. Uh-oh. Alex, this must be... Wait! There's a... Oh. Alex. Fiddlesticks. What's supposed to happen here? And the cage is... Alexander starts to feel a little. The bottom of the cave. Alexander is getting re mercifully. Dang it. Sorry, that wasn't supposed to happen yet. That does happen, but not yet. Dang it. <laughs> Whoops. Alexander put. I thought I went back to the beach. Okay, hang on. Alexander feels a strange pulling. Let's try this again. From so we go west. So I need to go that way, not that way. From okay. the east. Genius. You'd think you'd go back east when you went Alexander west, takes apparently the side. you go south. Figure that one out. Alexander reaches into the fire pit. Okay. South we go. We do want to go that way eventually, From but the northeast not yet. Come okay, okay. Map. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Whoopsie. Alexander. <clears throat> we gotta do a little magic first. Go and save the game. Alexander decides to pass through the gate, preparing the shield just in case. <clears throat> the magic arrow completely shatters the shield. 
Good thing the arrow didn't hit Alexander. Yeah, Frank. Alexander takes a magnificent white rose from the rose hedges. Alexander walk, but the rose head. Not gonna slow him down. Alexander wields the scythe, determined to get past the magical rose hedges. The leaves fly as Alexander tries to cut the branches faster than they can grow back together. He sees light. He's through. <laughs> Who dares enter Beast Garden? My name is Alexander. I didn't mean to disturb your private garden. No. And yet, monsieur, you could hardly have accidentally broken through the three enchanted traps of the Isle of the Beast. Um, I, I suppose it is simply my nature to oh, break right. through enchanted traps. <sighs> you must be a prince, then. I know the nature of princes all too well. This face you see before you is hideous, is it not? Well, for the face of a beast, it is really quite noble. Ha! I'm glad you like oh, it, clever. for you will soon own one just like it. I too was once a pretty prince. Caring for nothing but adventuring and rescuing fair maidens. But I rankled one too many evil hags. One dark night, I was turned into this obscenity you see before you. Warped in shape and trapped on this enchanted island over a hundred years ago. Surely there is a way off this island. Oh, surely. You broke in, did you not? And yet think... Where would I go, clad so eloquently as I am with this silk and this pelt? You see, my prison is also my sanctuary. You are the first to break through the barriers in low these many years. That is, except for the druids who stole my heirloom coat of arms. If there's any way I can help... Help? You? I'm afraid you don't understand. The enchanted barriers were a warning and protection for you more than for me. Your prize for forcing your way past them is to join me in this dire life. So it was the hot water, the shield, By the laws of this the sorcery, you are doomed to be trapped in the form of a beast. Your reward for broaching this garden is to be my slave, a slave as beastly as I am. You have only a few hours of humanity left. But that's not possible. There must be some way to break the enchantment. Spells always have a weakness somewhere. The enchantment you are under is tied to my own. Oh, the sorceress left me a way out. But I'm afraid it was only her final bitter joke. You see... I need only find a maiden to join me here, to share my castle, my life, willingly. Take another look at me. You can't help but admire the hag's terrible cruelty and cunning. I shall try to find such a maid, for Cosima's sake. Truly? How determined of you. I personally would not waste my last few hours as a man on an impossible errand. However, you may do as you please. I give you this token. It's my family ring, and the only heirloom I have left. If perchance you should... If you think you have found a maid... I shall give her this ring. Yes, she must accept it of her own free will. By doing so, she accepts me. Not that you shall find anyone, mind you. Your time is short. Count the minutes on your fingers while your fingers you have, pretty prince. Your master will await you. Here we go.
Alexander pulls out his magic map. Well, Alexander feels go. a strange pulling sensation. the bird something one more time. Jalo, my friend, is the wedding still moving forward at the castle? Prince Alex, he gads, yes, that confounded wedding has a whole castle a bustle. Look, I didn't come here to talk about that, though. I came to warn you. Warn me? About what? Isn't the wedding bad enough? No! Listen! The Wazir knows that you're here, Alexander. He's posted extra guards, and he's telling them about a foreign saboteur. Who else could he mean but you? The Wazir's genie must have learned of your presence in the land, Prince Alex. <laughs> I don't know how, but he must have. I haven't exactly been discreet, I'm afraid. Alexander, this is serious. El Hazred will never let you get close to Kasima now. He stumbled the castle guard, probably to make sure you keep out. Dead Zooks! Oh, it's too bad there isn't some way to convince Al Hazred that you've left the islands or even died. If he thought you were out of the way, you might be able to get close enough to... Hmm, what an interesting thought. Tell me more about this genie. The genie's name is Shamir Shamazel. El Hazred brought Shamir with him when he came to this kingdom. Shamir probably won't directly threaten you, but that doesn't mean he isn't dangerous. He can be a terrible trickster and an ingenious spy. <sighs> it's too bad we can't get our hands on Shamir's lamp. If we had that lamp, El Hazred and all of our problems would be solved. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a fine thing? You would wish to be master of such a wicked creature? Oh, Shamir isn't necessarily evil. Genies never are, you know. They only reflect their own as heart, for good or ill. <laughs> Al Hazred is hardly a shining example for an impressionable genie. Hmm. So how do you propose we go about getting Shamir's lamp? What? Oh, Prince Alex, I was only dreaming. I mean, the lamp is heavily guarded. It would be easier to steal Al Hazred's own trousers while he's wearing them than it would be to get that lamb. But surely a clown's hands are quick and agile. Well, yes, they are, as a matter of fact. But then the theft would be detected almost immediately. And then... Ooh, my poor neck. If the theft were detected. Oh, I see. Yes, well, there might be a slim chance, but only that. If you could find a replica of the genie's lamp, uh, an exact replica, I might be able to make the swap. I alone might get close enough. But I couldn't tell you what to look for. I caught a glimpse of it only once. I would know it if I saw it again, but to say I, I cannot. Well... I'll just have to see what I can do. Good luck to you then, Prince Alex. I, uh, really must be going back to the castle. I don't think I'll be able to come back here. If we were spied on, well, it's too high a risk. I hope you understand. If I see Kasima, I'll tell her I saw you. If you do ever make it to the castle, look me up. And do be careful, friend. I will. Goodbye, Jalo. Thanks for all your help. <laughs> Alexander rests his feet for a moment. Alexander picks up and leaps idly through a book called The Changing Role of Court Entertainers Through the Ages. Well, that was refreshing. Yeah, 
pardon me, maid. I hope you don't think me forward, but I see that you like roses. I thought you might, perhaps, like a fresh white rose. Alexander can see the conflict in the girl's pretty face as she fights between her distrust of him and her desire for the white rose. The rose wins. Oh, I shouldn't, sir, but it is so lovely. I've never seen a rose of white. It looks so pale and delicate. Wherever did you find one of such a color? There are many hedges of them on the Isle of the Beast, and they grow together like magic. Oh, truly? What an adventure that must be to see them. But I should not speak so, especially to a stranger. Thank you for the rose, though, kind sir. Alexander sees no use for that item there. Alexander has a thought about the serving girl. He decides to bring up the subject of beast with her. Let me tell you about the place where the white roses grow. The Isle of the Beast is an enchanted place. There's a path running through a deep forest. The path crosses three magic blockades set to keep all visitors away. At the center lives a tremendous beast. Really? Magic blockades? How exciting! What kind of a beast? Is it very terrifying and ferocious? It is a beast that walks on two legs and dresses like a prince. It speaks with the voice of a man. A beast that talks and wears clothes? How is that possible? Is the beast magic too? Not magical. Enchanted. Beast was once a prince, but a witch trapped him in the form of a beast and set him on the island. There he lives in a castle in the midst of a maze. How terrible! Imagine how lonely he must be. It is a very lonely prospect, isn't it? Oh, I have met him, you see. He is indeed ferocious, but who would not be? He really exists? Oh, how it breaks my heart. If I could, I would tend to such a beast. Such a beast might find comfort in a kind face. Do you not think it's so? Oh, I think it's so. I very much think it's so. You would not be afraid of him? Afraid? Maybe at first. But how silly of me to speak so. The roses in this little yard are the only magic I will ever see. I could take you there. In fact, I would owe you my life if you would go. Uh. If you truly wish to go. You are serious? I could leave here? Oh, I have always dreamt of leaving. But to actually go... This is the only home I have ever known. I'm scratching my leg. I don't home know is a hard place to leave, even if you're unhappy there. But I will go. If I can help him, I, I must go. Is there nothing you wish to take with you? There is nothing. Then take this ring. It is his. He will be pleased if you would wear it. Why, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Thank you kindly, sir. Beauty! Where do you think you're going? To a place where roses grow and to someone who truly needs me. I see you wear my ring. You willingly agree to spend your life here with me? Mr. Genie. Do you know what that means? <clears throat> yes, my lord, I do. I have been touched by your story. Pity alone need not sentence you to endure this face. Oh, but it is a gentle face and kind. 
You look at me so sweetly and are not repulsed. Oh, by the light of your eyes, my spirit soars! The enchantment! It is broken! That was easy. I am pleased to have served you, my lord. Do you still wish me to stay? What? Speak not such nonsense, beauty. Do you think that I learned nothing of true love during my time here? You are my queen. Oh, my clothes! This gown! How well it suits your noble heart. Alexander, how can I ever repay you? I have nothing to offer except my gratitude. But please, take these old clothes. Perhaps you'll find someone in need during your travels. You have already repaid me by your example of courage, beauty. And by your friendship, I hope. You will always have our friendship and loyalty, Prince Alexander. But from a fellow adventurer, take some advice. If you find your true love, protect her with your life. He's trying. We're all beasts without the he redeeming found his true humanity love. of He's trying love. to protect her. And to aid you, accept my mirror. Now that my life is no longer hung in false shadows, I have no need for it. Give it to someone with nothing to fear from the truth it reveals. Thank you. I wish you both well. Come, beauty. Let me take you home. Alexander takes a magnificent white rose from the rose hedges. Alexander pulls out his magic map. And we're off to the Isle of Wonder. Alexander feels a strange pulling. Alexander picks up the bottle. Alexander gives... The other baby's tears seem to resent Alexander's gift for some reason. Alexander collects some of the baby's tears in the old hunter's lamp. Alexander pours the contents of the oracle's vial into the hunter's lamp with the baby's tears. The vial, now empty of its sacred fluid, disintegrates. Your Highness may as well spend her royal time contemplating something else. The lump of coal shall be sent to the Castle of the Crown under my name, and that's all there is to it. No, it shan't. Yes, it shall. 
If the coal is sent in your name, I shall royally decree a ban on all red on this isle. You do, and I shall royally decree that white shall be henceforth used for all mopping up of cabbage stew. You wouldn't dare! <laughs> oh, wouldn't I? Oh, it's you! Have you thought of any more of those brilliant ideas of yours? Yep. Actually. Tim's house. Whoops. So... I found the two of you another lump of coal so that you can stop fighting over the one you have. Oh, let me see! A lump of coal! And what a beauty it is, too! Oh, marvelous! Now we can stop fighting, sister. Ow. Your Highness can just keep the old lump of coal, and I'll take this new one. <laughs> Quite right. That settles everything. As a token of our endless esteem and royal favor, please accept this magnificent and truly incredible spoiled egg. Gee, thanks. Uh... Uh... Thanks. Actually, that egg will come in handy later. Let me see that lump of coal, your highness. It is a beauty, isn't it? Why, it's bigger than my lump of coal. Let me have it immediately. Here we go. Over my dead body, your highness. It's my lump of coal. And it is indeed larger and much grander. Just look at that sheen. I demand you exchange with me immediately. Exactly. Alexander pulls out his I did not always have heard when I show up, that's funny. Alexander feels We can make our first spell. Yay! Actually, let me turn the volume down. I'm getting on my nerves. Save the game. The denseness. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Alexander fills the hunter's lamp to the brim with the fountain water. Alexander prepares to enchant the hunter's lamp with the Make Rain spell incantation. Clouds of thunder, shafts of light, come and sup with me tonight. Waters three have I for tea, brew a tempest now for me. In King's Quest three, he did a lot of spell casting. That was a lot of fun because you had to type every single line of the spells in and the spells were long. The lamp in Alexander's hand gives a little perk. He hopes the spell works despite his makeshift teapot. Actually, 
Save game. Oh, my neighbor's practicing. I can hear his music. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Oh, Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. I think he gets accosted as soon as he hits the all the mess this time. Yep. Bam. Great gods. Did you see that? The man just appeared from nowhere. He sure did. Perhaps he was sent by the spirits. I see no boat. He is an intruder, no matter how he got here. Grab him! Not again. Look, I'll leave. It's no problem. I think not. Let's go. Alexander is frozen at the spectacle before him. Robed figures are gathered around this a bonfire. This is the same accidentally did last Some time. Some mystical ceremony is taking place. But as to its purpose, Alexander has no clue. We found a trespasser on the beach, Archdruid. Uh-oh. Archdruid. Now what has Alexander wandered into? This must be the foreigner we were warned about. How appropriate that he should come during our rain festival. Place him in the sacrificial cage. Wait! I must rescue the princess! There's an ancient druid saying, a man who would save others must first save himself. Alexander is pushed into the confining wicker cage. And the cage is swung out over the bonfire. He doesn't die this time. Alexander right starts to time. feel a little warm. The bottom of the cage is getting uncomfortably hot. This cage is really hot. Fire in the cage! Alexander pulls out Beauty's old slave clothes, desperate to beat out the flames. The flame is extinguished, but the clothes themselves burn to cinders. Alexander won't be able to keep the cage from igniting for long. The heat and movement must have jarred something. Something that Alexander's carrying is starting to jiggle around. Egad! Something's really percolating! The water in Alexander's lamp is hot. It's just about... Boiling! Alexander feels a drop. It starts to rain. That man is a powerful nature wizard. By the sacred oak, let nature him wizard. down! He's a nature wizard. Short, I must apologize for our rude welcoming committee. We've been feeling inhospitable ever since the winged ones stole our sacred miniature oak tree. Besides, Wizir Al-Hazred sent a message that we were to watch out for a highly dangerous foreign assassin. I assume you are the one he meant. I'm sure I'm precisely who he meant. I assure you, I mean to harm no one, unless that person threatens the princess. I'm sorry to have disrupted your ceremony, but I'm running out of time. What is it that you seek? The Oracle on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain told me I should speak to you about the Realm of the Dead. She told me of two souls in unrest there that I might be able to free. Free souls in the Realm of the Dead? You're mad! The souls might be able to help me on my mission to save the princess. It's imperative that I do everything I can. The risks are not important. No. And yet getting yourself Ooh, killed will hardly help the late. princess. But I will tell you what I know. Legend has it. 
that it is the right of any human to challenge the Lord of the Dead in order to save his own life or the life of another already passed. But the knowledge of how to do this was lost centuries ago. I have only heard of one who tried it, a young knight who came to the land of the Green Isles from a distant land long ago. According to the story, he was determined to challenge the Lord of the Dead for the soul of his dead lover. It is said that he tamed the Lord of the Dead's horse, a black-winged, demon-hearted beast named Nightmare. It's Nightmare Pegasus. sometimes flies to the human world to feed on certain noxious plants. Those unfortunate enough to see her are glad to escape with their very souls intact. Somehow the knight captured Nightmare and rode off on her back, supposedly to the realm of the dead. But neither the knight nor his lover ever returned. If there was a means for challenge, it was lost with the knight. I see. Can you tell me anything about the Lord of the Dead? Ah, Ow. that is a blacker matter still. To the druids, he is Samhain, Lord of coldness and despair. Samhain was once a man like you or I, but he insulted the gods and was sentenced to rule the underworld. Immortal he is and mateless. Robbed of sleep, robbed of movement, robbed of companionship. It is said that he hates all mortals even more for the mortality that he lost. That is all I know. Interesting. I shall remember. Now look how the oak embers of our bonfire still glow hot despite the rain. If you're bent on your course, you'll need courage that's just as impervious to the chill. Ah, may your luck last longer than your storm, brave one. May it indeed. Thank you, Archdruid. <laughs> Alexander scoops up some of the red-hot embers in the ancient human skull. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander. Sacred Mountain, we go. Save the game. Because we got to make the climb. Although, we only have to climb this first section, which is good. Then we'll suddenly appear at the top. Whoa! It's doing so good, too. And we're at the top. Okay. Alexander arrives at the top of the cliffs, somewhat winded after his long but uneventful climb. So we need to put... Where's the hair? Oh god, that's good. I finished the hair. Alexander the puts skull. the strand of hair into the skull. The egg in the hair. Alexander cracks the spoiled egg and dumps it into the skull containing the embers and the strand of hair. The spoiled egg hisses as it makes contact with the hot embers. Zounds the steam. Phew, the smell of sulfur.
we paint Dolly Brain. We need to capture Charming a Night Spell. Alexander solemnly speaks the incantation over the skull. Creature of night, to me succumb. Fire and brimstone Ooh. leave thee numb. Purity bind thee like a chain to do whate'er I now ordain. Nightmare flares her nostrils at the scent of the fire and brimstone. That's it. Come on. I need passage to your homeland, fiery one. Pegasus. Unable to resist the power of the enchanted smell, Nightmare approaches Alexander. Her eyes appear glassy and sightless. In her hypnotized state, she is unaware of the human so close to her flank, or of anything at all except that marvelous smell. Now ride! Whee! What the heck? Really? 